comes to affordable third-party lenses with autofocus that are also fast, the selection out there is kind of slim. But there are some gems available, and the lens we're filming with right now is one of them. This is the Viltrox 24mm f1.8 for Sony full-frame cameras. This would be the alternative to Sony's 24mm f1.4 GM, only the Viltrox is about $1,000 cheaper coming in at $429 US. Now because I'm a video guy way more than I am a stills guy, I really don't tend to focus on things and really search for things like chromatic aberration or corner sharpness, unless it's something really, really noticeable and the lens is just terrible. If it doesn't just stand out automatically to me without me searching for it, not really something I tend to focus on. Now I'm not saying that this lens suffers from any of that at all. To be honest with you, I haven't noticed anything and Again, I don't really peep like that. And the reason for that is I shoot in log 99% of the time. I love color grading, it's therapeutic for me. And by the time a heavy color grade is finished with a creative look on top, all the original characteristics like that are kind of out the window anyway. If the image looks good to me, then we're good to go. And the image coming out of this lens looks pretty good to me. Let's head outside. Look at that beautiful sunset. What a view, huh? It's good to see a lot of third-party manufacturers now making lenses that can support Sony's autofocus. For a while there, a lot of, mostly, most of the third-party manufacturers would make lenses that are manual focus only, but as of recent, we're starting to see a lot more, which is great because, you know, not everybody can afford a two or $3,000 lens. Not everybody can afford a $1,500 lens for a prime 24 mil. In that case, you have a great option like this, and it's a great option. We do have an aperture ring on here. It is not clickable. It's just fully de-clicked, so it's just a smooth turn, but luckily it's a tight turn. It's not loose like when you de-click some other lenses like the Sony 24f1.4 and the 20f1.8. When you de-click it, it's kind of smooth. This, it has, some, it has some pull to it. If you're a vlogger, if you're somebody that just kind of shoots in the same fashion that I do, a little bit indoors, a little bit outdoors, you're kind of just all over the place, and you don't really need that much of a zoom lens, this really might be able to just be your one-stop do-it-all lens. It's great in low light. I think it's perfectly wide enough to vlog with. I'm really satisfied with this lens. I did sell my Sony 24 f1.4 just because I found myself not really using it as much because I had the 20 f1.8. It's a very similar focal length, even though I do like lens distortion on a 24 way more than I do anything wider than a 24. A 20, I can see the difference in how my face looks. To me, a 24 looks the most natural. And another thing that's great too is it's a small lens. It's small and lightweight. The only problem I kind of have is, which is just a problem with me, all my ND filters are 82. 82 mil. I get the biggest ones because I do have 82 mil lenses and then I could just step it up. This, however, is a 55 mil. So my step up rings looks like a birthday cake. It's like just stacked all the way up and then you have this heavy ND filter on the front and that whole setup pretty much doubles the weight on this. So I might have to go out and pick up a 55 mil ND. We'll see, let's get back inside. It's crazy. Autofocus is good. It's small, it's lightweight, it's very inexpensive. This lens is looking like an absolute win to me, in my opinion. I only have two really small complaints about this lens and that's that the aperture ring can't be clicked. I like a clicking aperture ring so that it's locked in place and if it does move, I'll either feel it or hear it. Probably won't hear it, but I'll know that it's moving. Even though the aperture ring on this lens is really snug and you have to give it a nice little turn, like you have to know you're turning it in order to move it, still, you just never know. Besides that, I would have liked to have seen an AF-MF switch on the side of this lens just to make it a little easier to jump into manual focus. Have to do it in body, not really a huge deal. Again, not a deal breaker. Besides that, I think this lens is awesome and I think it's well worth its price at 430 bucks. I'll leave a link in the description below. Don't forget, we also have the Patreon down below and LUTs and Tees are still 50% off for a short amount of time, so jump on it while you can. And I appreciate the support in advance. I'll see you guys next time. Yeah! <laughs>